morning in the last uh, few lectures we discussed about uh, various equations associated with uh, screw inclined plane efficiency self locking overhauling and uh, we have seen few problems also based upon those basic equations today we would like to discuss one of the very important device a device called screw jack and we also will see a problem on the screw jack if time permits we will see one more problem on bit work threads okay yeah let us see what is a screw jack for what purpose a screw jack is used and how you get the benefit from the screw jack and what is the mechanism that we adopt in the screw jack and how the rotation of load is prevented when you are applying a force in a screw jack these things first we will discuss then we will go for a problem so you can see the screw jack so this is a device called screw jack you are all aware of this is a simple screw jack use it to lift the loads okay but here the basic principle involved is your wedge principle or an inclined plane principle what is that principle and what are the types of screw threads we use and how it operates let me first tell you then we can go for the problem so the the screw jack purpose is to lift the loads okay heavy loads can be lifted with uh, less amount of uh, effort so it is our customary requirement is we have to extract more output with minimum input that means i have to lift more load okay with my less effort how it can be done is as, as simple as a screw jack device we can see here okay so you can see in this screw jack there is a threaded screw is there there is a threaded screw is there so this threaded screw is placed in a nut this is the nut and this is a screw this is a nut and this is a screw so suppose if i assume this nut is fixed okay and if the screw is placed in a nut and if the screw is rotated then the screw advances like up and down this way so this screw by rotating by rotation and it moves vertically up and down because it is kept in a nut a nut and bolt principle isn't it you take a nut and bolt so keep the nut constant and place the bolt and rotate the bolt so by rotation of the bolt you can see there is an advancement of this bolt that is nothing but what you can see here is screw so this screw suppose assume there is no collar cup and everything simply a screw is there and a nut is there say in that case there is a nut and screw is there nut and screw is there say there is a nut and there is a screw this is a screw and this is the nut portion and this is the screw portion if i revolve this screw as i said this screw not only rotates it also moves up and down if i keep some load 
on this screw so the load lifts not only lifts it also rotates okay so this is what you can see a screw which will lift the load but also rotates the load but our requirement in a screw job devices is not rotating the load our job is only lifting the load okay so how to prevent this rotation of the load only linearly advancement of this load that is provided with the help of a collar this is provided with the, the help of a collar so you can see we make this screw such a manner that there will be a spindle head and once again there will be a rod which we call it is a lever is used to rotate the screw so when we discussed about the basic fundamental equations of uh, load lifting okay either lifting up or lifting down we assumed directly the force is applied at the periphery of the screw but in majority of the cases it will not happen like that we don't directly rotate the screw we keep some device where there will be handle that handle is going to rotate that is what you can see here this is the spindle head this spindle head will have a provision of inserting a tommy bar tommy bar which is also called as a lever then this is rotated means the screw is rotated so you can observe here there is a collar which is placed at the top of this spindle head this is the collar so we provide here a clearance so if we provide a clearance here so that uh, this collar will be lifted up and down without causing rotation without causing rotation so my job is completed because i am lifting the load okay without rotating the collar without rotating the collar so i have to consider the friction to overcome in two areas one is the friction between the nut and screw and the other one the friction between collar and this bearing surface so i am considering two frictions in this case one is screw and nut friction screw and nut friction and the second one is collar and bearing surface friction bearing surface friction okay so then my total force requirement will come by considering both the screw friction as well as the collar friction so keeping this in the mind i would like to solve the problem okay and at the same time one more thing you you can have a doubt sir why this lever is required or what is the length of the lever you have to provide like all these things you are very much familiar with the lever principle okay so if you take a lever with a longer length with less effort you can apply or you can lift the load very comfortably but at the same time there will be certain limitations that how much amount of length i can provide because you may not have the enough space when you are using this screw jaw or whatever it may be isn't it so you 
can see for what purpose we use the screw job to lift heavy loads with smaller effects or less effects and where the load is placed load is placed on the screw top so when i said very beginning when you put the load at the top of the screw then when you rotate the screw then the load also rotates so the load also rotates along with the screw but my objective is not rotating the load my objective is only lifting the load so to prevent that rotation of the load okay a swivel head is used this is what you call swivel swivel head the swivel head is used so in that case we have to consider the friction associated with the swivel head and the screw rod okay both has to be considered one is screw friction and another one is a collar friction isn't it that is the two friction to be overcome to raise the load okay so this is the background of screw jaw okay here the screws which is used is usually square threaded screw okay and uh, the problem is usually asked with uh, like the information uh, yeah here i have used uh, i have written certain formulas which are required for you to solve so let us see what are the formulas you require so these formulas are not new to us these are very much familiar to us but only the thing we apply appropriately what are those formulas what is the torque required or the force required to raise the load okay as well as what is the torque required to down the load the basic equation which you are already aware of it what is it w tan alpha plus phi w tan alpha plus phi is the force requirement and the torque is equal to w tan alpha plus phi into r so w is the load w is the load okay and uh, alpha is the helix angle phi is the friction angle r is the radius of the screw okay that is the one formula which we use torque to raise the load so similar when you are using to down the load what is the torque required this equation is already familiar to us that is w tan phi minus alpha into r same terminology of w alpha phi in r so when we get this equation by assuming theta is equal to 90 degrees theta is equal to 90 degrees that means the angle between load and uh, uh, what is it uh, the force applied is 90 degrees then the another formula which we use is a mechanical advantage which is nothing but load by effort load by effort is called mechanical advantage and finally the efficiency equation which we use tan alpha by tan alpha plus phi these are the general equations which we require to solve the problems of on screw job let us see the problem first so this is the problem this is the problem a screw jock raises a load of 16 kilo newtons through a distance of 150 mm the mean diameter and the pitch of the screw are 56 mm and 10 mm respectively determine the work done and the efficiency of the screw jock when the load rotates with the screw so this is the case one and the case two loose head on which the load rest does not rotate with the screw and the outside and the inside diameters of the bearing surface of the loose head are 50 and 10 mm respectively then find take the coefficient of friction for screw on the bearing surface as 0.11 so here as I told you, there are two cases. One is load rotates along with the screw, isn't it? That is the case one. And another one, case two, load will not rotate along with the screw. So he has asked both the cases. 
first case is load rotates with the screw and the second one is the loose head is used so that the load will not rotate so then you are supposed to find out work done and efficiency in the both the cases case 1 and case 2 let us first write what is the data we require so the load screw job load is 16000 newtons that is 16 kilo newtons it has to be lifted at a height of 150 mm the mean diameter and pitch of the screw that is d mean is 56 mm and the pitch is 10 mm okay so first you are supposed to find out what is the load rotates with the screw the work done as well as the efficiency of the screw job so this is the data for first part let us see the first part then we will proceed for the second part so this is the part one then part two this data is same but in addition to that what is the other data you get the loose head bearing surface having a diameter of 50 and 10 mm respectively so bearing surface bearing surface diameter say inner and outer so like 10 and 50 mm then we can get here d mean of bearing surface which is 50 plus 10 by 2 is there this is 50 plus 10 60 60 by 2 30 okay so this is used for uh, to solve the second part of the problem so first we proceed the first part and then we will go for the second part what is required work done and efficiency work done as well as efficiency in this case work done comma efficiency so we know that uh, the torque is equal to torque requirement is equal to W tan alpha plus phi into R. Okay, then here what is alpha, what is phi, and what is W and what is R? Let us see. So, what is W? W is the load, which is 16,000. Then, how to get the alpha? So, tan alpha is equal to P by phi d. Okay, what is P? P is the pitch. Then phi. What is the mean diameter? 56. So I will get tan alpha. So I got uh, alpha. Okay, then phi. What is phi? We know the friction is 0 0.11. So, mu is equal to tan phi, which is equal to 0 0.11. Then you can find out phi is equal to tan inverse 0 0.11. Then, what is the radius? Radius is equal to 56 by 2. Okay, that is 28 mm. So, I got all the values. My duty is to simply substitute in that equation. Okay, let us see what are the answers that you will get. So, the given data already I have uh, mentioned. Height is 150 mm, load is 16,000 newtons and pitch is 10 mm. Then the diameter is 56 mm and coefficient of friction is 0 0.11. So tan alpha, I have written these formulas just now and I have substituted this and I got alpha value is 0 0.325. Then what is tan phi mu is equal to tan phi 0.11. So phi is equal to 0 0.628. Then
then what is the torque force into distance uh, radius that is w tan alpha plus pi into r you got alpha value you got pi value so substitute alpha and pi here and load is there anywhere and radius is converted into uh, meters that is 56 by 2 is 28 into 10 power minus 3 that is 0 0.028 which gives 75.21 newton meter. Then what you are asked, you are asked to find out what is the work done, what is the work done and the, what is the efficiency. So how much uh, height we have to lift? 150 mm. And what is the pitch of the screw? Is it 10 mm. So it has not stated whether it is a single start, double start or what start. So if they don't give any information, I assume it is a single start. That means uh, for one rotation, I get uh, an axial advancement of 10 mm. So to get uh, 150 mm of advancement, 150 mm of advancement, how many number of turns I have to turn? So number of turns is equal to 150 by 10 that is 15 tons that means the screw has to be rotated for 15 times then you will get the necessary height to be lifted okay then the first part of the question is when the load is rotates along with the screw what is the work done we know that uh, the equation for work done is 2 pi nt the equation for work done is 2 pi nt so this is n what is this number of revolutions so how many number of revolutions 15 revolutions and what is the torque required 75.211 so you can substitute it 2 pi pi is 22 by 7 n is number of revolutions 15 and t is 75.211 which gives around 7088 newton meter so this is the first part work done that is when you allow the load to rotate along with the screw then what is the efficiency so the simple formula for the efficiency when you consider only screw friction then it becomes tan alpha by tan alpha plus pi already we got alpha value and pi value so then by substituting this we get this is 33.8 percentage tan alpha by tan alpha plus pi is 33.8 percent that is the first part of the problem then what is the second part of the problem and how it differs as i said in the second case we want to prevent the load rotation okay but whereas in the first case it is a funny thing when you are trying to lift the load the load is not only lifted the load is also rotated which we does not require actually okay but there is no other go that was the method it was designed but whereas in the second case the load does not rotate along with the screw so as i have shown in that previous uh, sketch where we have provided one collar so that uh, a loose fit is provided between the screw and collar so that uh, the screw only rotates okay and lifts the load and it will not cause the rotation of the load so for that as i said you have to consider the friction of a bearing surface also that is a collar friction as well as the screw friction two frictions we have to consider so for that he has given the bearing surface diameters of 50 and 10 then the radius as just now i have calculated in the first slide itself the mean diameter of the bearing surface that is 50 plus 10 by 2 that is 30 so then the half of it will become radius that is radius of bearing surface okay half into 50 plus 10 by 2 which gives 15 mm then as i said here you have to consider once again the other friction called collar friction what is that mu w r this is the collar friction mu w r mu is the coefficient of friction in this problem he has given the friction 
at all the surfaces is same that is 0.11 then load is w okay that is 16000 and the r r value is 0.015 meter i have converted the mm into meter 15 into 10 power minus 3 that is 0 0.015 then you get uh, the torque to work on the collar friction is 26.4 mm already you have another friction which we previous case we have solved screw friction which we got 75.211 then the total torque is uh, the torque required for collar friction as well as the screw friction the two torques i convert into a single torque that is a total frictional torque that is 75.211 plus 26.4 which gives me 101.61 and here also the work done in the load is the same that is the torque into 2 pi n so the value of torque in the earlier case only 75 and whereas in this case the torque will be 106 101.611 so hence we get the answer that is the work done is uh, 95.77 okay then come to the next part is efficiency so here the efficiency we cannot write tan alpha by tan alpha plus phi because here not only screw friction you are considering the collar friction also so this is an another equation which we need to find out the efficiency and in the earlier case also you can use the same formula and you can find out this but there we have a standard simple formula tan alpha by tan alpha plus phi that is why that i have applied so what is efficiency we can define work done in lifting the load per revolution by work done by the applied force per revolution so what is the load you are lifting w you are lifting the load w okay and how much distance it is lifting a distance of pitch that is w into p for one revolution and what is the work done you have applied you are applying a force f that is the end of the tommy bar and by rotating that for one revolution is pi d okay so you can see by simply rearranging these equations we know that tan alpha is equal to p by pi d so this this tan alpha p by pi d is rewritten okay this is the tan alpha value then this is w by f and at the same time we can write f is also what is it p by r that is the total torque by radius where you are applying isn't it so here what is the torque this is 101.61 101.61 so what is the radius the radius is 0 0.028 okay so that is converted into mm meter it was given in the mm i have converted into meter so you get this is the requirement of force then by simply substituting the entire thing in the efficiency w 16000 is known to us and f we have calculated here 2629 3629 sorry and finally what is your tan alpha very beginning the alpha value you are aware of it tan alpha is equal to 0 0.0568 by simply substituting it you get this efficiency is 25 you can see in the part 1 we got the efficiency around 33 percent and whereas here we got 25 percent can you say what is the reason behind it why the percentage of the efficiency has been decreased from 30 to 25 the reason behind it is the thing is you are overcoming the collar friction also you are overcoming the collar friction that means that also needs some external effort that is why your efficiency has dropped from 33 to 25 so this is one of the very important problem for the academic point of view so the problems may be in a different mode with the numbers will change but the procedure almost we have covered all the 
cases that is load without rotation, load with rotation and efficiency and as well as the work done. Okay. So in the next lecture we will see the other problems which are uh, different from this routine, uh, this problem applied to various uh, practical applications of devices that we will see in the other lecture. Thank you.